Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Ayo Midotsu Ayo Dili Um and I am here this evening to speak with uh, Eno Eka. I hope I said it right. Yeah. Um, we will be having a conversation this evening around what it takes to kickstart your career, um, make a change in your career, and then lock into some good progression, um, making the change from moving into Canada as an immigrant. Uh, I'm here on the platform of Africa X. Africa X is a media platform that's focused on all things Africans in the diaspora. And our goal is to ensure that we are providing um, useful, actionable information that people can use to move themselves forward in their careers. So that's, that's who we are and that's what we are about. Uh, right now, we're just going to jump right into the thick of it. Uh, I will start by introducing our panelists and guests this evening. Um, Eno is a trained accountant, even though she wouldn't like to acknowledge that. <laughs> but allow me to farm a bit. So Eno is a trained accountant who has transited um, out of accounting into the business analysis and technology space. And not only has she changed careers, she has also transited from being an employee to being a business owner, all within the last um, uh, five, two to five years, all in. So tonight she'll just be sharing her story, telling us um, who she is, where she's come from, what she's done, um, and taking questions on how we can achieve our goals as immigrants in this part of the world. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Enna after she's done sipping her glass of water. <laughs> yes, I need to prepare myself, but yeah. Um, thank you for having me, Dr. Tung and the Africa X team. It is uh, a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to come on this platform and share my story and um, and basically share everything that I know that could help the people who are here, people who are coming, whoever gets to see this today, tomorrow, years down the line. Um, I hope they can learn from my story. So my name is Eno Eka. I currently live in Calgary in Alberta. That's in the west coast of Canada. Um, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, Suleri to be precise. Suleri people. <laughs> born and bred in Suleri, Lagos, Nigeria. Um, um, did a bit of uh, moving around uh, Nigeria for, you know, school and youth service and all that. Um, so, yes, I am an accountant. I have a BS in accounting. So, yes, <laughs> very well so. Um, so, you know, I have a BS in accounting and... Um, I've also, I also have a postgraduate um, and a master's in uh, strategic leadership and business management. However, um, uh, I'm now a business analyst and change manager. And um, that notwithstanding, everything that I've done, um, you know, everything that I've learned so far has been valuable uh, for me in my career. So um, a bit about me is, um, I worked as an accountant, I was working as an accountant until I had um, an experience to be on a project team. And I got, um, I got some exposure into project management and kind of, you know, felt more interesting to me. And being that um, I sort of had some competences that were relevant to the team. They found me very valuable with, um, my analytical skills, I love to solve problems, I have great communication skills, I was able to really work with the stakeholders, internal and external stakeholders, so um, kind of caught my attention and curiosity and I didn't feel like I wanted to go back to that because I, I so it, accounting is monotonous and I just kind of go forward with, you know, the spreadsheets and, you know, just all that stuff and it was sort of 
an opportunity for me, right? So I, I just saw a really small hole and, you know, I, I took it. So I, you know, took a course in project management and from there got into business analysis. And because I'm someone who's very curious and I'm also very versatile, like I, I like to read, I like to learn new things. I always had that interest in IT and technology. So I did a lot of learning, you know, taking courses, self-study, whatnot, because moving from accounting to business analysis and then working on software and tech projects wasn't the easiest, but I sort of scaled through. So, um, you know, got certifications in business analysis. And then um, before, you know, as I was, you know, sort of gaining ground in the business analysis space and um, sort of building my personal brand um, on LinkedIn uh, before I even left Nigeria, because um, a lot of people were like, how are you going to do this? There's not a lot of people who do business analysis, it's not the most popular thing. Um, so I, I was actually, you know, very vocal about what a BA does and, you know, how I do it and how exciting I, I like the new job. In fact, before I even left uh, Nigeria, I, 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 got the, I got a message on LinkedIn from the former CTO of um, former Diamond Bank. And he's like, I want to have a chat with you. Um, we're actually looking for someone who can be a B and PM on one of our project teams. But at that time, I was already um, getting ready to leave for Canada. So I didn't take that offer. I referred a friend who got that offer. But it was in those early days that, you know, I started building my personal brand and trying to sort of keep my head above water because, you know, I would made that transition and I knew that I had to stick with it. So okay. um, preparing to come to Canada. Do you want me to stop there? <laughs> no, I want to ask a question. Yeah. So from the moment that you decided... This accounting thing isn't exactly digging me to <laughs> becoming the evangelist. What kind of what kind of time frame? How many kind of books, courses? <laughs> what, what, what happened between point A and point B? What kind of time? What kind of study? What kind of education went into that process? You wow. make it sound like it was like a month. No, oh no, <laughs> no, it wasn't a month. It was. It was, I would say, dedicating at least two years, um, two years of my life into that, getting into that space. Because um, I first took a project management course, um, and then the, the, the PM book changed again. So I took another project project management course, and then um, I went ahead to now do a business analysis course because I was, I was, I had a very good um, colleague of mine who said, I think you're more of a BA uh, because of the competencies you have. And I said, yeah, I agree. I think, I think so too. And then I started doing research about business analysis and I found, wow, I think this is like the perfect role for me. So I took uh, a training, you know, and then I had to take the exam. I, I went to Ghana to take the exam because it wasn't so popular at that time. And the truth is even the people who were in those training classes, because there, was there wasn't a lot of trainers to in Nigeria, I mean, like a handful. I think there were only two in Lagos at that time. Um, it wasn't the most popular and you know it was a, it was not cheap you know because you pay your fees in the us dollars you pay for the training it wasn't it wasn't cheap either you have to fly out of nigeria to take the exam and a lot of the people who were like in the course with me or i even met at the exam center were people who were already sponsored by their companies like the mtns and the glows mm -hmm. You know, so those are the people that were actually so they were more like sponsored, but we that we were you know using our our salary, to, it out. <laughs> you know, our, our own um, eyes were red and we were like we have to get this right. So um, it was a lot of work. I mean, I was working full time, and then at that point in time, I started my postgraduate, so I did a PGD first. So I was doing that at the same time while studying. So it wasn't the easiest of things. Uh, working full time, you know, preparing for my certification um, and also trying to keep up with uh, my master's program. So it wasn't the easiest. I mean, I remember, I remember leaving work every evening at six and going to study at the library till nine, ten, and then I get home and I was doing that every day. So it took a lot from me. Of course, my social life, like a lot of things I had to sacrifice. And then, of course, financially too, because you know, paying for fees in pounds, paying for all these things in dollars and here and there. So, and then of course, at some point, you know, Canada came into the picture and that's also not a, a cheap adventure. So it took a bit from me, um, about say about two years of really just putting my head down and saying, I want to achieve this, this is what I want to achieve. So 
yeah, there was a bit of sacrifice there and it did take a while. It's not something that happens overnight. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good. Thanks for clarifying that. Please proceed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there is no magic pill to this. It does take a while, but it's a lot of consistency and commitment, right? Um, so, um, yeah. So where did I stop? Anyways, um, yeah, and then I started preparing oh, for, Lagos. preparing for Canada. Um, mm. I started preparing for Canada and, um, you know, Canada pulled through and there I was. Um, everything sort of happened very fast for me. Um, when I applied for, you know, when I got my, I, I applied, um, my friend told me about Canada and I'm like, are you sure? I've heard of a lot of people have been scammed. Is this thing for real? Send me some links. It looked legit. Added me to a WhatsApp group and the people there seemed like they were legit, right? I'm like, okay, let me just stay in this group and just be a silent member and monitor what's happening. And then I keep people since, uh, see people say, I got my IT, I got my PP. I'm like, what's happening? Okay, this is real. People are saying, oh, I've landed. I'm like, okay, this is real. It's not a scam. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. So did everything I needed to do applied and then the next day I remember I applied on a Tuesday on a Wednesday they did a draw I got my ITA I'm like okay I did everything so we had all the documents and then in a month I got the PPR and I'm like wow and I, the visa I'm like okay this is for real the visa is here so this is actually for real and then that's when it dawned on me that wow you're going to pack up your life something you're just starting now and then the funny thing is how at that point I started gaining some sort of um, popularity in the BA space in Nigeria where, you know, people were reaching out to me and saying, we would like to have a chat with you. We're a startup. We're looking for, you know, product managers and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is happening now. At least I could, I could still get, you know, gain some ground here in this new career path. But Canada happened and I, I had to arrive. So I did. Um, but before I came, you know, a lot of people were saying a lot of things that, you know, it wasn't possible, especially from all those like groups, people who have been here for years. And I say, oh, I'm coming to practice as a business analyst. They're like, really? Business analysis? That one is tough. You know, as a new immigrant, you don't have the experience. You probably have to go back to school. Um, you know, you have to just look for anything you can to just get started. Forget about degrees or anything. You have to go back to school. You have to just start from any job, any admin. You did accounting so you can do admin or anything. But I knew that's not what I wanted for myself. So I had that, um, I had that um, conviction in me that my case will be different, basically. So I really just started preparing ahead. So um, I didn't land to like a week till my visa expired. And I don't say you should, but I just, you know, sat back and said, what are the things I need to do right now mm -hmm. that, so that when I land, um, I don't have to struggle. So I started going on Indeed, looking at business analyst, you know, job descriptions. What are they really looking for? What, what, what would a company in Canada look out for in a BA that I don't have? So I started doing a gap analysis and saying, okay, these are the certifications they require. These are some skills they require. How can I start learning these things? And started taking online courses to learn all the things that, um, you know, I hadn't, maybe tools that I hadn't used or methodologies that were new to me. I started learning, practicing, you know, getting better, taking courses on the Canadian workplace culture, learning more about the environment. And then started networking with people. So before I had arrived, I'd, you know, made a few friends and um, networked with people that I knew that when I arrived, um, you know, the city that I chose, Calgary, I could meet up with them and ask them questions. And I was very strategic about my networking. I was networking with people who were already in the field I was in. I was, you know, I was in or I wanted to go into people who had, um, who had the same sort of path with me, who had like non-traditional mm -hmm. backgrounds, like somebody who never had a tech degree and is working in a tech company, someone who never had an engineering degree and is working in a construction or oil and gas company. I felt like these people, you know, are where I am right now. Where I am right now is where they were before because they also made a transition. So yep. I was yep. very strategic about the kind of people I network with. And then, um, um, I also was asking questions, you know, I asked a lot of questions. I, um, I also started preparing myself, getting to understand how the resume, um, Canadian resume works, getting people to review it for me, um, getting people who would basically mentor and coach me. So I started applying for um, some jobs before I arrived, um, um, but not that that's yielded anything 
but at least I started giving me that interview experience immediately. And so I did. Um, I arrived in Canada April 2018, finally, and you know, it was it was snowing in April. <laughs> Welcome to Calgary. <laughs> it was snowing in April. And yeah, it was a huge transition for me from you know from the, the hot sunny days on Lagos to you know the the cold um snowy days in Calgary and not knowing anybody but really just getting started and building relationships quickly and a lot of people that I met you know gave me a lot of advice. So there was advice advice that I took some some I said thank you and I knew that I wasn't going to take the, that advice where people were saying oh you know go work as a sales associate or a customer service or blah 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 and I'm not saying that you know anyone who works in those roles um you know doesn't have a bright future or potential but um it also takes some kind of conviction to you know say to yourself you know I have the experience you know I've invested so much in myself um I'm very well qualified to get a professional job or a, a role where I believe I deserve and it was really just that conviction that was really pushing me and people are saying you have to just take this you know take this just get started you know there's Staples or Walmart or Leon's and Rona is hiring and Home Depot and I'm like but I really don't want to you know stocking shelves that's not why I'm here like I've invested so much in myself and I'm I strongly believe that you know it's going to yield something you know mm. something okay that's where you know everything started <laughs> so if i let me let me just roll back a bit so that i can cl just um recap clarify kind of thing right yeah. so there was first the aha moment i'm done with the accounting i'm doing something new and yeah. then there was a two-year period of underground preparation quote and unquote yeah literally burning time and money studying preparing yourself for this career transition, even though you are still in Nigeria. Yes. Then there was the preparation before you arrived in Canada because you knew you were going into a new space, um, a new country. You are transiting, not just um, mid-career transition, you are doing geographical transition again. Exactly, between <laughs> one. Okay, okay, okay. And one thing that you said that struck me was one, you are very you are networking but you are not just networking with anybody who was moving with to canada or who had recently moved to canada you are networking with people who had made the jump either from you through a a, a non-traditional route like you yes. are about to do i yeah. in accounting yeah. into technology right. right now there was also the decision side of things you saying okay i'm making the move now and I have spent time and money on myself. And because mm -hmm. I know what, what I am worth, I refuse to take anything less than what I am worth. Exactly. So let me ask, how much, how did that feel when you started seeing people getting paychecks from all these jobs that you were passing up and you hadn't started getting a paycheck yet? How did you I, deal with that? I honestly didn't feel bad or terrible in any way, right? Because um, I, I, for me, I, I, I don't believe in the short term. I believe in the long term, right? I, I believe in playing the long term game, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even when I arrived, I, I still wasn't, um, I still wasn't backing down. I was still taking courses, doing certifications, right? Um, continuously developing myself so I didn't stop I knew I was so certain you know that um and then because I there's something that um I used to do and I never knew it was a thing and you know I teach people to do that now is to borrow belief so the people that I, okay. um, I networked with and I, I saw it, I said, this person's a Nigerian. This person went to UI, he didn't go to Yale or he didn't go to U of C. And he's a director or he's a senior um, project manager or a senior business analyst or he's a team lead or, you know, this person is a manager. If they could do it, they're from Nigeria, just like me, speak the same way, look the same way, then I can do it. You know, they didn't do anything extraordinary. And I just borrowed that belief you know, and ask them, what are the things you did? I would like to learn from you. And, and basically, 
groomed those relationships to the point where you know i had those people to always advise me you know even um when i had multiple job offers you know it was the people that were at the network with that advice take this role over this role because of you know then i got to understand more about benefits and you know bonuses and all those other perks with roles and all those things mm -hmm. that some roles can deceive you with maybe an hourly rate but at the end of the day you you miss out on some other things so you know and then also and also um you know how to you know leverage my soft skills so i found that you know, when I was able to borrow belief from these people and if they could do it, I can do it. That was the mindset that I had. I had that mindset of if these people could do it, I can do it as well. Okay. Bold, bold self-belief. <laughs> very, very bold. But yeah. <laughs> I, you know, when you, they say Nigeria, I believe in myself that I, mm -hmm. that, that is the confidence you need. That is the confidence that you need. That is really the confidence that you need. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, so getting to that point where you are now like, okay, um, you are making, you are in Canada now, you are meeting people, you are networking consciously, um, applying for positions, attending events, uh, working on building your brand, even though nothing has happened yet. What was that waiting period like um, between when you arrived and when you hit your first gig, your first real gig? And... What was that gig actually? Tell us. What was that gig? That first gig. <laughs> so um, it wasn't a. It was actually a long waiting period. Um, it wasn't a long waiting period, anyways. And really, that's just because, like I said, you know, I started doing a lot of groundwork, right? So even before I, I came, I, you know, I knew I had my resume done right. I knew I had a great LinkedIn profile. I knew that. Um, I had a lot of things already in check, right? And I knew it was going to come. I just had to, um, you know, keep preparing myself, understanding how to answer interview questions and learning. And, you know, also getting someone to coach me um, through that process. So I, def I did work with a coach. And um, it, I got my first offering, like, I think first two weeks. And, and, and it was really another offer with fin in financial services. And because I'd worked in financial services, it was, mm. it was an easy transition. And really what I learned from, you know, my coach was what I was able to use at that interview when I got the offer on the spot. And what I really had to do was really hone in on my financial services experience. So because I'd worked in construction and, and oil and gas and financial services, you know, I focused more on the financial services experience and, um, you know, spoke to that so well during the interview, uh, mm. and I got that in financial services. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and like you said, it wasn't it wasn't an, a long waiting period, but the key thing was there was preparation exactly. in terms of resume writing. There was yeah. preparation in terms of LinkedIn, putting oh, your yeah. public face, making sure that, sure that your public face was ready to be seen. Then yeah. there was also the preparation of your own upskilling yourself to where the market was ready to pay a premium for you. Exactly. Right. So whether that happened in Nigeria or Canada is irrelevant. The fact is that that was necessary for you to get to the point where um, you could command that offer. Absolutely. Okay. So next, um, first, jo first job, you're in there then how how did that convert a financial services ba type role now convert yeah. to um taking you know taking the plunge into i don't just want to do a job i want more and what what, what did that look like okay so um when I arrived, um, because I, I had a self-belief and confidence and I knew that I could do it, um, I'd actually also started volunteering, right? So I was volunteering with the IVA Calgary here and um, I was volunteering as a study group leader. So I was helping other people start their careers in business analysis through certifications. So, you know, I was doing that as a volunteer, uh, volunteering every week for the study group. My first dive into um, entrepreneurship was um, was actually a um, a consulting gig I applied for, and I didn't know there was going to be consulting gig. Um, but 
when he pulled through, it was with the University of Manitoba. And um, they said, well, this is a B2B, so we need to, we're going to be working with your company consulting for us. I'm like, wow, okay. So that was actually my first gig and I was still working, but I was doing the consulting um, on the side. So that was really how my uh, entrepreneurship or my, you know, my, uh, my uh, plunge into um, consulting, you know, came about. It's something I wanted to do down the line, but in my first six months here, I found myself working as a consultant and it was really just me putting up my hand and applying for a role and saying I can do it. Um, I didn't really know all the modalities that were involved in it, but that was just me, you know, still believing in myself and stepping up to opportunities. So um, when I was in that phase, I was more like a hunter, right? Um, so when a hunter is hunting, you know, if, when it's a shadow passes, you know, you tr try to get Look a around. shot. What's, up? What's going here? <laughs> and that was really me. Whenever I saw anything business analysis, I, I was just on it, right? So that gig was a business analysis gig, which was um, helping to, um, the university was um, going to start offering the BA certificate program and they wanted business analysts who had um, the certification, who had experience to um, come develop the content for the whole and structure for the whole program. So, you know, that was really my first gig at entrepreneurship. And, you know, I registered my company. And in no time, um, more opportunities started coming for um, training. You know, I had um, companies in and outside Canada uh, reach out to me and say, we'd like you to train for us. We have um, we want to, you know, subcontract um, this training with this company. We're training their, we're training their BAs, we're training their PMs on this, and that's really how you know opportunities started, started coming. And the truth is, it's kind of sprung out of you know my career. Um, what I did as a nine to five also was really what I was, you know, uh, what had transformed into my into my business. Mm. Um, mm. So. I, I, I want to touch on something that I've heard said to immigrants very regularly, which is the need yeah. to volunteer. Yeah. Right? So you came in, um, got a job. However, while, whether it was before or after you got the job, you are volunteering with the Calgary um, chapter. Yeah. And what were you doing while you were volunteering? You were helping other BAs. Uh, mm -hmm find their career, prepare for their exams, ace their interviews, and settle into their careers. Yeah, exactly. I started volunteering before I got a job. Before, before. you got the job? Yeah. Okay. I didn't have okay. a job, but because I, I had my certification, um, mm -hmm. I was qualified to actually help other BAs. Yeah. Okay, okay. And can you tell me the content of your business today? Ooh, okay. Um, so... Um, today, um, I still do, um, you know, content creation for um, um, colleges and universities with regards to business analysis and agile and project management. Um, we do training and coaching for business analysis, project management, and agile. Um, and then we do um, consulting. So I also consult for, um, right now, you know, small to medium uh, businesses here in Canada. Hopefully, uh, we, we land a gig one of the, you know, big companies soon. So mm. that's, that's really been our focus right now. Yeah. Now, so basically, if I'm hearing you well, yeah. you have basically just amped up what you are doing volunteering. All yes. you've just yeah. done is take, taking that to the next level. And then now you write invoices to do what you are doing volunteering. If I yeah, understand so, you very well. And I still volunteer. I still, I actually still volunteer every week to help people for free through the, uh, through IBA, but you know, I'm doing that now from a leadership level. Yeah. Um, but yes, the things that I, you know, volunteer to help people to do, um, you know, to do is things that right now, like you said, have now have been amplified into um, part of my business. And then also, um, the amazing thing is also having people who have businesses reach out to me and say, I need your help. You know, we have a problem, you know, we're stuck right now. And you know, call you coming in as a consultant to look at your business, look at the structure and provide advisory. Um, and this is really all based on the knowledge that I've gotten so far, um, my experience and the qualifications that I have. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So if, if I can ask, um, 
is there any methodology that you've been able to put together? Uh, I know you've, you've done all this fancy stuff. And I, <laughs> some of it has been winged. Some of it has been reading. Some of it has been um, other people's material. But is there anything that you've come up with in this, um, in doing all of these things that you've done, making this transition and enjoying this progression that you've enjoyed to this point, that Absolutely. you you've put together in a manner that you know if people just saw this they can just even if all they do just hone on hone in on these next few minutes of you <laughs> sharing your your experience and your methodology is there something like that that you've come up with that you yeah like absolutely with? so um you know i i teach um sessions a lot and some of them are business analysis sessions some are just basic you know career strategy transition and progression and everything um, you know, revolves around these things that I'm gonna speak about. And it's basically like a seven step framework, right? Um, people may have heard me call it the seven pillars of success, you know, seven steps or whatever. But uh, the, first, the first step is the mindset, right? So getting your mindset right. Um, I find with a lot of us, um, the initial struggle and where we feel stuck is our mindset. What do you think of yourself? You know, Ask yourself, who am I? What do I have right now that companies need? Um, what are things that I've achieved so far in my life? Where do I want to be, right? And every day, ask yourself, you know, am I where I want to be? Do I have what it takes? Um, I find a lot of people, um, um, people that don't have, um, you know, that positive mindset. I find that they they struggle um, because not of their own doing, but because of the way their mind is fashion and I'll explain. Um, I met people who um, when we were moving here they would say you know any way in a way you know anything anyhow you know just to survive you know and these are people who already have experience but because they've they've had their mindset that way that oh I have to you know do the hustle hustle way first before I can you know get something good because their mind was set up that way I sort of found those people you know, fall into that path of actually doing those, you know, menial jobs and hustling because their mind was already set up that way. So something that I, you know, I say is the first part is your mindset. What do you think about yourself? What do you believe about yourself? Yeah. What do you say to yourself? What are the things that you tell yourself daily? And how are you actually going to take action towards this? Um, for success, 80% is the mindset before 20%, which is just a strategy. It all starts with the mind. So... Yep. You need to be able to, you know, hone into your mind, and it's it's something that a lot of people haven't been able to um, get a grasp on because there is that inner conviction you need to have that you know this is going to work out. I'm going to achieve this. Um, I've done the work, and it's going to pay off. So the mindset is the first step. You know, you may have had all the you, there are a lot of people that, that you know have certifications and have done courses, and they still you know, fall back to struggling because they haven't really honed in on their mindsets, right? So the mindset is um, the first step. Second step is experience, right? So, you know, you're moving here. You're not moving here as someone who's fresh out of, you know, high school and coming to, you know, start your first degree. You already have experience. The reason why you were even admitted, you know, or accepted is because you could prove that you had experience so look at your experience and say well, what are the things i've achieved so far in my career what are the amazing things i've done what are the accomplishments that i have and how can i help other companies with these things that i have so look at your experience dissect everything that you've done in the past five ten two years and look at the things you've amazing things you've done based on your experience and find a way to on those things and amplify them. Make sure your resume speaks about it, your LinkedIn profile, right? On your resume, look at the things that you've done and try to translate it in a way that it delivers value or it shows value to your potential employer, your hiring manager, or in your, your experience. Your experience is valid. I never tell anyone who, is, who moves here and says, oh, I'm an immigrant and you told me you're from Nigeria or Africa. We're, we, I have a friend who said the that she's never met, you know, any Nigerian um, that didn't have a master's. 
right and i thought yes because it, that's like the basic for us like sometimes you you even finish your bsc and you already you already have a master's I in admission <laughs> with, like, i thought like that's how we like book and our parents pressure us and that's why we all have professional degrees too because somehow they make us believe that you know it's the book book way they don't really yep. encourage entrepreneurship per se so that's why we're so brilliant that's why we're so smart it's like yeah that's why there's a lot of you here Right. And this is, you know, someone who's born in Canada and having this, um, you know, this to say about us. So we already have experience. A lot of us have worked on amazing projects, you know, no matter what the name of the company was, even if it wasn't a Fortune 500 company, trust me, you need to find a way to hone in on your experience. Now, nobody, nobody um, that has, that I've worked with, you know, knows the companies I've worked for. They don't know a Zenith Bank or a GTB or a Glow. They don't know those companies because they're not like, companies they would see um, you know, on, on, on their TVs, right? So they don't know those companies. So you need to be able to find a way to um, make your experience attractive, find a way to hone in on your experience. You're not entry level. Mm. You move your experience, you are not entry level. When people mm. reach out to me and say, I'm looking for entry level roles, I say, well, I don't know about entry level roles because based on your resume, I see you have 10 years of experience. So you are definitely um, someone who should be looking out for um, meet, meet to senior level management roles, you know, and they go like, oh, no, 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 if I can just find intern. In fact, I'm like, no, you know, so um, I kind of also like to push people and, you know, to sort of hone in on their experience and be confident in what they know. And then the next thing is knowledge. So a lot of us, like I said, we've done a lot of, you know, certifications. We have degrees, some two, three, four degrees, um, you know, we've taken courses. What what have I gotten from these things, right? How can my degree in accounting or engineering, how can it be valuable? How can I leverage the knowledge that I already have? Or if I have some knowledge, but I'm looking at the job description and there's a gap, how can I close that gap? What are the things I can do right now? If, if I look at the job descriptions, for example, business analysis, and I see that, oh, there's, they're always asking for CBAP, CBAP. What is the CBAP? research on it, how can I get it? Because the truth is, um, if you can close in on that gap quickly, you know, that's the way to also um, help your transition and progress, um, progression faster. So mm. focus on knowledge, um, you know, improve yourself all the time. Skills, so the next thing is skills. So knowledge is different from skills and that's because skills, a lot of skills we have are not things that we actually need to go to university to learn or go to school to learn things like your communication skills, you know, things like your problem solving skills, your analytical skills, um, things like your interpersonal skills. And this is something that I've been able to leverage. So what are the skills I have right now? If you look at the job description, you see where they put the skills, you see where they put um, experience. A lot of times the skills are very important. So look at the skills you have right now. What are the skills required in the roles I'm looking out for? And how can I get better or how can I learn? So you focus on skills, learn new skills, improve on the skills that you have already. And then the next thing is certification. So if there is a certification that is required in your field, whatever field it is, get it. Um, I say this because as immigrants, we already do not have experience here. So that is already something that is against us, right? right exactly. And, uh, and there's many other things too. However, if, if I see that there's, if a certification is going to get me there, and I mean, why not? That certification doesn't mean you do not know how to do the job. However, that certification that they're asking for, whether it's a PMP or a CBAP or a CPA, validates the knowledge and experience that you have. So it brings everything together. Whereby when I come and say, I worked at Kosoko and Kosoko Company, they're like, what was Kosoko? What do you do there? And you say, I'm an accountant. They're like, okay, tell me about what you did. And then when you say, I'm also a CPA, and then they want to listen to you because, you know, that's something that they can relate with. Yeah. There yeah, are any situations right. that are relevant in your field, get it. Mm. It'll cost you some money, they'll cost some investment, but they always pay off. It always pays off at the end of the day. So don't, um, don't think that, oh, this is so much, it's expensive, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it pays off. So I mean, why not? If not, they always pay off. So get certifications, you know, if you need to, it validates your foreign knowledge and experience. It makes them to want to speak to you, okay? And then the next thing is coaching and mentorship. So 
I shared this earlier and I talked about the people that also helped me in my journey. So find people who can coach you, who can mentor you, people who you can ask questions, who can guide you. Um, I've gotten a lot of guidance in my career and even in business, in entrepreneurship, because I had people that were there to support me, you know, paid coaching, yes, uh, mentorship free or paid, yes, whatever it is I needed, because at the end of the day, for everything that we do, as long as it's an investment in yourself, there's definitely going to be a return as long as you do the work required. So get that. Trust me, there is nobody that doesn't have a coach. Nobody. The best athletes have great coaches. The best athletes become coaches, right? You never, I like to follow the lifestyles of athletes, right? Um, I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. Um, you know, I'm a huge Oh, Jordan so you're not a Braun fan, eh? Um, oh. <laughs> let's not go there. But okay, you know, I saw like, you know, and I see that you know these are people that, I mean, there were other great guys on the Lakers team, right? There were yeah. other great guys on those teams. However, you know, this guy, you know, when you look at their life, you see that they invested more in when people when we were, um, you know, we were on break before the playoffs. He's, he's doing preparations, working with a coach to prepare himself for the next season. And that's what sets you apart. When he comes there and he's shooting shots from everywhere and he's doing three-pointers all the way, people are like, oh, he's magic. Or they say, oh, Magic Johnson, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of these guys had the same coaches and they used those coaches that they knew would help them get to where they want to be. Mm. Okay? The best musicians have coaches, right? Celine Dion, Michael Jackson, they invested in getting coaches to do voice training. So the truth is, for a lot of us as career people, we always just feel like, oh, I, I got my BSc, or I got my CBAP, or I got my CPA, blah, blah, blah. But we forget that we all need grooming. We all need people that help us throughout our journey, right? I like to look at the lifestyles of all these other people that are not in our professions and seeing what can I copy from what they do? And I see the things that they do is they have people, they have a team, you know, they have someone who helps them with their physical health. They have someone yeah. who helps them with mental health. You see that the, the coaches talking to them during halftime. I, I watch and I see these people are actually telling them and coaching them what to do. And they come back and then everything is different, right? I look at the lives of, you know, superstar footballers, see Ronaldo, Messi, and people hail them and say, oh, Ballon d'Or, blah, blah, blah. But trust me, these guys do the work. These guys are on the pitch every day as early as 5 a.m. playing their, you know, out, right? And they, they're doing the work in silence. And then when you see them out there, it's like, oh, these people are superstars, but you got to do the work. You know, it, it's, it's painful. It takes, it takes time. It takes a lot from you. You know, you miss out on maybe the social life and all that. But at the end of the day, you know, it pays off. And that brings us to the final step of things. So you've done all these things and you've probably gotten some success. Don't stop. So continuous improvement. You need to keep improving yourself. Um, the world, the world is, the world, everything in the world is changing so fast. Things are so fast paced um, right now. Everything is so dynamic. There's no field anymore that um, anyone can tell me that things are the same way it was five years or 10 years ago. What mm. are the things, industry trends? Are you subscribed to industry blogs? Are you following thought leaders in your space? Have you joined communities of like minds like you? Before I got into the tech space, I was already following a lot of people in the tech industry. I was following a lot of articles. I was buying um, tech magazines, tech times, just to know what's happening in the tech space, to keep myself up to speed. I want to know what's happening in the BA space. I want to know what's happening in the PM space. I want to know what's happening in the agile space because these are the spaces that I play in and things change so fast. So continuously improve yourself. Don't stop. Like find ways to always learn new things and stay ahead of the game. That's how you're able to push yourself into success. So these are the seven things that I teach people on how to, and it's basically um, cyclical. So, you know, it's rinse and repeat. You never stop, never stop working on your mind. They never stop learning, improving, preparing yourself, getting the coaching and mentorship that you need, continuously improving yourself. The people that you see that are successful, I like to learn from people's lives. Mm. Just focus on their lives and see what you can learn about them. They do all these things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Nice. So this, be, be, this is uh, the, the 45 minute mark. And before I recap what Edna just shared with us, I uh, will be taking questions after this. So if you have any questions for Eno, you can just raise up your hand. 
And uh, in recapping, she said, one, your mindset. And I think that's definitely the most important thing. How you see yourself, what you, how you perceive yourself, how you think people see you. Your, your self-image is so critical here, right? And mm -hmm. as, a, as an individual, that's, that's an area that irrespective of how many years I have um, worked as a professional, how many years I've been in business for myself, that's one thing I am battling every day. Self, self, self-doubt, self-image, yeah. right? Just continuing to repeat to myself that I know I can do it. I know I have the competence and the capacity and just keep reminding myself. And when I have my little wins, I celebrate them and I, you know, move on along nicely, but I stick with it because you never get over the hump. Um, then the experience, of course, highlighting what you do. And then when you do and do something you've never done before, being able to put that in the proper light, right? So uh, basically, whenever we run updates on maybe LinkedIn or our social profiles, they should be speaking to the things that we are doing differently. So even if all you're doing is you are now volunteering in a local chapter or you are volunteering in a local food shelter, make sure that that ha counts for you because it does count. It shows that you are interested in the community. It shows that you are committed. It shows that you are willing to put time into seeing other people develop. And that's so key. I just want to add something there that yeah. volunteering brought me to opportunities. Um, first day, um, my, um, when I got into tech, the first day I resumed my role, um, my manager, because it was a Skype interview, so we met the first time on my first day, and she said, what stuck out for me on your resume was like when I saw you volunteering with the IBA. Oh. When, um, when I got the opportunity with the university, it was because I was volunteering to teach. Right, so they they saw that you know I was already in the education space and I was already doing something that had to do with educating people, mm. right? And they wanted they wanted um, they were they were very uh, specific about the people they wanted. They wanted people who were already affiliated with the IBA. So okay. you know, so you want to make sure that when you're volunteering, that you know it, you put it out there because you never know the opportunities you get from that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks. That that adds up. Then of course you talked about um, knowledge, which is book and skills, what you do with the book, right? And yeah. then of course, certification. So I, I think for me personally, certifications were important. I came in with my Nigerian ACA. I did my ICANN, I passed it in 2009. I was like, done, been there, done that, never going to do another one of them ever again. Yeah. And then Canada comes along and I get here and I'm like, yeah, I came in, I had a decent job, but I just realized I just made sense to go after the Canadian designation. And it, it took me some time, it took me about three, three four years, but yeah. I did get over the hump because what it did for me was it made it easy for me to say, hey, you know what, don't, don't ask any questions. I work with PwC in Nigeria and I'm a designated accountant in Canada. So don't even bother. Let's not, let's not negotiate it. Let's not debate it. It's not up for debate, that kind of thing. And then, of course, you talked about coaching and mentoring, which has come to the fore now. And it's clear that it's, it's important. It's important that you have people that will, um, will I say, hold the door open for you, shine the light on what you can be, right? Mm -hmm. um, show you what the potential is, what the promise of tomorrow could mean for you, right? right. And whether we like it or not, we, we don't always see the best of ourselves. So part of what, at least for me personally, part of what coaching and mentoring has done for me is help me see the, the potential that is, that I have, that I can't see. Sometimes you just can't see yourself. Your eyes are outward. They are not inward. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look in the mirror, sometimes you're like, oh, is that me? Okay. But if you're not looking at the mirror, you really can't see yourself. So coaching and mentoring is so important. And then of course, continuous improvement, which is basically a loop of everything else that we've discussed. So start something, um, work through it, keep working through it. And when you get to where you think is the ultimate, talk to your coach, let him give you a fresh vision and then you push ahead yet again. <laughs> so um, I, those are the seven steps. I will be putting those together in some form or fashion to share on our website. And okay. um, yeah, so uh, right now we are ready to open the mic uh, for the next, 10 minutes, we'll be taking questions from anyone who has questions for Enor, whether it's about 
uh, the business analysis, PA, product management, agile, scrum space, the tech space, or whether it's about entrepreneurship or whether it's about just moving forward in your career. So uh, if you raise your hand, I will unmute your mic and you'll be able to ask your question. So questions, we'll take questions now. So, Emmanuel, I'll start with you. Emmanuel, are you there? Okay. So does anyone have any questions for Eno? If you can't speak, you can put it in the chat box or something, maybe if you have if it's having technical issues. Yeah, I guess I guess so. Okay, while while we while we wait, I have I've basically just asked them, allowed everybody to unmute themselves. So if anybody has any questions, please just um, go ahead and speak. But I think my own. Uh, hi, hi, Enike. Did I say that? Hi, right? yeah, that's right. Okay. Hi, Eno. Hi. Um, I'm one of your fans on LinkedIn. I <laughs> I follow you a lot and uh, I'm so inspired by what you've shared tonight and looking at um, how long you've been in Canada, just two years and all these accomplishments, I would say it's um, inspiring. And um, Dotun, thank you for the, this meeting. Okay, my question is, um, I love the way you elaborated on the um, experience we gained back home before we came in here. I have been in the construction industry for over 12 years, but um, coming to Canada, I decided to switch to IT. Yeah, um, I'm a certified uh, project manager. And Great. so when I decided to switch to IT, when I got into Canada, I took the IT, foundation for certification exam. I also, I've done a couple of certification. I would say all together, um, <laughs> 28 Ooh. between last year to, mm -hmm. to um, last, last week, I just um, did my Azure uh, fundamentals exam and um, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been, um, st it's stretching, so to say, it's stretching, coming to the IT space where uh, I have a degree in industrial chemistry, so I actually have no, <laughs> no background whatsoever uh, in the IT space, but I have some basic knowledge. Now, what I did was... Um, during the time I made up my mind to transit, I wasn't searching for a job. I wasn't searching for a job. I got in here, I got uh, um, a customer care representative job because I have a family. I needed some paycheck. <laughs> so I, I need to pick up something. Yeah, from what you said is, is yeah. but our cases are different. So I had to pick up something while I was preparing myself and um, getting ready for the IT job. So my question now is, um, last month, I decided to just shoot at my CV to see if maybe I will, um, to see what happens. And I got a call. I actually got an interview in an IT uh, space for a project administrator job. Although they got back to me that they had to go with someone else. 
my joy is at least I got an interview. It shows that my resume is being noticed, mm -hmm. and um, and um, if I try harder, I believe I'll get some. So my question is, what kind of encouragement will you um, give to me? I really have passion to go into the IT space. The end point of it is to become um, a cybersecurity consultant, but I know I cannot get. Not I cannot. I know it will be difficult to get my foot at the door with a cyber security job without experience. So I, I want to see if I could get in through project management and, and you know learn more about it, then start transiting gradually to the goal. Okay, what what did you do in Nigeria? I was into construction for 12 years. Okay, construction as what a civil engineer or no what construction as a project manager. Oh, got it. Okay, so yes. you're in construction um, space, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so you've gotten some certifications under your belt. That's great. Um, you, your resume is getting attention, so that's good. Um, make sure that you're aligning your resume to the roles. Um, and then, did you ask for feedback for the role that you know you got? Um, why did it move forward with you? Was it just based on experience, or there was something that was missing? Yeah, from the tip I got from the meeting, the uh, uh, interview you had with Dean, um, I had to ask for a feedback on why I wasn't chosen. And the lady said, "No, that um, in fact the um, the role was so competitive." that my interview went very well. She actually acknowledged that I did very well in the interview. But I figured the problem was because they got someone who is experienced in the field. That was what I think of, although of course she didn't tell me, but that was what I perceived. Because I, during the application period, I had to reach out to the leader of the PMO team okay. to also get him to, to go through my, my LinkedIn, he went through it, he gave a very good remarks. He actually said he's ready to shake some trees for me and see what falls. You know, so yeah. when I got the rejection decision, I also got back to him, thanking him for his response. And he just told me to stay in touch. That let's see what happens. Exactly, which you should. You should stay in touch. So um, aside from, you know, doing applications, I like that you're also networking. So reaching out to people in the companies that you're looking out for and also being strategic. Um, um, you know, look out for companies that hire people that, you know, look the companies in the construction space, right? And look out for PM roles there. Connect with people on LinkedIn who are project managers, who are leading PMOs, who are project coordinators, whatever they do in that project space in construction companies and start connecting with them. Be in their faces, be visible in their faces. So as you post on LinkedIn, because you're their connection, they see you already. They know what you do. They know your stuff, right? When an opportunity comes, build that connection, you know, um, be friendly and nice in the chats. And then when an opportunity comes, when you come back and say, hey, Dotsu, this is NEK. We connected um, sometime in May. Um, how are you doing? Has, you, you, you mentioned something about um, working from home now. How's that going? And then, you know, he says, oh, it's great to hear from you, NEK. How are things on your end? Well, things on my end are fantastic. Um, well, I've got great news. I'm actually interviewing for a role in your company. Can you imagine? We're going to be we're going to be colleagues soon. Crazy, right? I can't wait to have coffee meetings with you. You start building those relationships, right? And then he's like, wow, amazing. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. So yeah, and I, I was just hoping we could just hop on a 15-minute chat. I just wanted to get to know more about the team, the manager I'm going to be reporting to. Send him a, send him, um, a link to the job description. Is there a referral system in your organization? I'll be happy. I'll be grateful if you can refer me. So you want to make sure you're strategic in what you're doing, right? So mm -hmm. I said before, I'd worked in financial services. So I sort of focused on seeing how my financial services experience was valuable. So I got, I got a role in financial services. The next one was a company that, um, that um, develops technology for financial services. So, mm -hmm. so for, for banks, for credit unions, you want to make sure that you're, um, you're visible and you're actually doing the groundwork. Right. So as much as you're applying, you also want to be strategic as well. Right. So um, 
it's glad that is you know it's ha- i'm glad that you have someone in that company that you know look out for you but you also want to have a couple of people in other organizations as well that are in your space right and i'm not saying you shouldn't apply to other um you know, um, companies, you can, but also try to see, like I said, experience, what are the things I've done? Is my experience in consulting, my experience in accounting, my experience in banking, my experience in insurance, right? My experience in construction, you know, find ways to, and then be visible on LinkedIn, build a personal brand for yourself. Network with people, you know, there's COVID now, but you could have like a Zoom chat or a Skype or something with people. And then look at recruitment and placement companies. Those are also ways to get in the your foot in the door with you know maybe a short contract or a long-term contract um i hear people tell um new immigrants to run away from contracts i don't agree you know whatever gets your foot in the door take it right um take that first gig um it might not be six figures at first but you know once you've got that experience and you, you keep improving yourself you keep doing all those things we talked about you will definitely pull through so i hope um these tips are helpful for you yeah, they, they are. Thank you very much. Um, but I think that there's so something you didn't get. I'm making a transition from yes. construction to IT. Construction to IT, but construction companies still need technology. They still use technology. So, so okay. leverage your construction experience to get in a technology company that supports the construction industry. Okay. That way your construction experience remains valuable. While you are construction industry, right? Yeah. Construction, construction industries here still use technology. Technology, they would upgrade it. They would buy mm-hmm. software, right? They would upgrade their software. You know, there's so many things that would be done. So they mm. still have an IT team. They still have a technical team. Or okay. like softwares that construction companies use. So who provides that technology to them? Is it SAP? Mm. Oracle? Or they'll definitely have their own custom software. I don't know what software they use here. Who provides okay. those, those softwares, those technology, and how can I find a way to get into those companies? So look at the value chain and see where you can fit in. Okay. Thank you very much. This really helps. You're welcome. Fantastic. And Anna, do you want to answer CC Deal's question? Yes. So um, CC, it depends on um, you know, what you're referring to. So I don't know what your um you know, what you've done in the past, but you could definitely shoot me a message on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to chat with you to see if there's a good fit here. Um, I have, um, you know, one of um, coaching sessions I have monthly or quarterly, depending on, um, you know, what your need is at that point in time. So it will be best to speak to you and get to understand, you know, where you're coming from and really understand, you know, how, how we can work together if possible. But yes, I do offer coaching services and business analysis coaching specifically. Okay. So if I can wrap that up, basically you are saying that you provide bespoke tailor-made coaching services. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sounds like designer suit kind of things. Yeah, I do bespoke coaching. Um, It's not not open to a lot of people because it's it's very private. And then I have um, business analysis um, coaching programs. Okay, so how do those work? Um, is there a frequency to it? Is there something? Is there something people can jump on? Where can we find that information? Oh, absolutely. So you can go to my website www.nnoeka.com, or um, head to my LinkedIn profile. Um, you would see all that information there on my LinkedIn profile, um, or you know, or shoot a message if you want to uh, shoot a message on LinkedIn, or if you want to send an email. Um, send an email to assistant at nweka.com. My assistant uh, will um, get back to you on, you know, whatever um, openings we have. If you still have openings for one-on-one coaching or if uh, we've opened the doors for the business analysis coaching program. And certification as well. We do certification for BA, for Scrum as well. So is that preparation for the certification? Yes, so preparation classes. Okay, so BA prep. Yes. Yeah. Scrum prep. Yes. Uh, agile prep. Yes, yeah, Scrum and Agile, and then okay. uh, career coaching. And okay. then we also do, um, you know, workshops. So, so people who want to um, do practical on um, how to practice business analysis using the tools, creating business analysis documents and deliverables, then uh, we also have that workshop. And then we have a membership program. So um, you can have access to all, all of that, all three or four, 
if you're a member of our program. So there's different um, layers. Um, so, you know, based on where you are right now in your career, um, then you'd be advised on um, what's the best option for you. Fantastic. So, um, Akin, you have a question? Yes, please. Hi, you know, um, my name is Akin. Um, and um, I also practice in the project management, Agile, Scrum, and mm -hmm. um, Lean Six Sigma environment. Mm -hmm. And um, this question is just to kind of challenge you and to probably help a few um, immigrants that are listening that may be struggling with the current situation that we have specifically in Alberta. What, what would be your advice to... This is a, I, I'm going to paint a scenario and I yes. want you to respond to that. I would yes. say, um, what's your advice to an immigrant mm -hmm. who has a background in, say, computer science, yes. um, has lived and worked in the UK with a mass MBA from the UK? Okay as well as a PhD in public admin in the UK. Mm. Recently arrived in Alberta specifically, yeah. considering the um, downturn in the industry, um, the level of competition the person will be facing because of the number of people that do have Alberta experience, do have Canadian experience, and um, have been out of work because of um, the situation we are in and really wants to get into that professional career line, um, either at the entry level or even the volunteering level, just to you know, test the waters to figure out where they want to go. What advice would you have for that person? Okay, so um, this person um, has a master's, master's in what? what what's the an MBA. An MBA, fantastic. What, what's the person's experience? So most experience would cut across biz, um, business development, okay. marketing, and HR. Okay. So um, what's that person's, um, you know, zone of genius? What would that person say, you know, his or her zone of genius is, is you know, the area okay. where, you know, he's best at? So I would just pick one. Let's say BD, business okay. development. Business development. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Now, based on the person's experience, what domains or, you know, industries have that person worked in? Um, I would say academics. Academics. Okay. Mainly, because, mainly because of the span of time used in doing the PhD and working with the um, university involved. All right. So if that person has already, already has experience in the academics, then um, I would say that person should... Um, um, start looking out for roles in the academic. And um, if that person wants to teach, um, there's opportunities for instructors all the time with a lot of the universities. That's something a lot of us don't even look out for. We think, oh, we need to have worked here. As a, you don't need to be a professor, but you can actually start with instructing. So that person can look out for instru instructor roles. Um, um, I see a lot of them with SAID and U of C and even the U of M where I am, you know, what I do is virtual for them. And they're always reaching out for instructors all the time. So, or asking us to recommend instructors. So the person can look out for instructor roles. The person okay. can also look out for roles in the academic. So um, what I find is with, um, with, the, um, with the academics, there's, um, there's a lot of respect for, um, you know, people who already like have that, like the PhD or whatever, that person could, Leverage that, um, that person could get um, a very strong recommendation from um, maybe your, um, um, your thesis supervisor or something, and sort of use that to um, find how you can get into that same area. Maybe you said, you said public admin or, or health, or private public health or something. Public and see, yeah, and see you know, what's offered in, in the university for that area. So that person can leverage academics or um, also try to see opportunities in the academic space here to work, you know, in the office, you know, to do business development for them, um, you know, look out for what challenges do they have and see how you can, 
you know, network with people who are already in that space, right? And um, find opportunities to sort of communicate your value in there. And then um, with business development, you can really work anywhere, right? Um, but if you're doing business development, then for that kind of person, I would say that person should be very strategic with um, the connections and, that you're looking out for. So, for example, um, approaching organizations with um, sort of a solution to a problem that you perceive they have or you know that they have doing a, you know, doing a, a slide deck, you know, to ca capture their attention because the truth is when you're doing BD, you know, there's also the aspect of, okay, what's in it for us right now? You know, what's the value you have to offer? Is it going to be, are you, um, are you um, recommending that we um, you know, diversify into this area? Are you recommending that, you know, we um, start a new product line or that we enter a new market, you know, and tell them how you can do this for them. So that's also something that you can also leverage um, your BD experience to actually start pitching companies. Um, it's something that you might do aside from doing general applications. Um, when, you know, someone who has experience in BD has experience in doing great pitch decks and actually speaking and presenting. So that's something the person can do, aside from the general strategies is what I would advise. But yeah, I'm, I mean, we've always heard about Alberta all the time, you know, since, since the last big recession, every time Alberta is down, there's unemployment, but the, you know, I mean, people have to get an opportunity anyways. I mean, people get laid off, people get, um, you know, people um, get new jobs, especially people in oil and gas get affected the most. Um, but there's still those opportunities out there. And we just have to try to do something different every once in a while. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Aki. I really appreciate that. And um, thank you to NEK and CC Deals for their questions. Uh, I want to thank Eno. Thank you very much for making the time to be here, to answer these questions, to tell your story. Um, I, I, have found, I have found this very engaging and I really appreciate it. So what are we going to do now that we've been able to capture you for one hour, 20 minutes, get, <laughs> keep, keep you talking. <laughs> um, this, this session has been recorded. So probably maybe sometime tomorrow or the next, by Monday at the latest, this video will be on our website. It will have a link to your website as well as your LinkedIn profile and probably a slide deck with your seven points for success, as you like to call them. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll share that via email with everyone who has registered for this webinar. So thank you very much, Eno. We really appreciate you. Thank you to everyone who has um, signed up to be present. To all 18 people who are online right now, thank you for the time. For the people who popped in and popped out, thank you as well. And uh, we really appreciate this. We, we at Africa X are very keen on bringing you great content and um, interesting people like Eno to tell their story. So, yeah, we, we will continue to reach out to you from time to time as we run our event. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Eno. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate um, this. I'm honored to be here to um, speak with all of you. I wish we would turn on our cameras. It would be nice to see your faces so that if I get to see you somewhere someday or I get to see you on LinkedIn or wherever, I could, yeah, I, I see any case. So that picture, I know that picture. So yeah, <laughs> but you know, it'd be nice to, um, you know, put a face to the name. And um, yeah, I would really encourage a lot of us to get active on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great platform and you get noticed as a global platform. And the truth is every CEO, COO, CIO, CTO, they're on LinkedIn. Right, these yep. people are, and they may not be active, but they are reading, they are, they are watching, right? Um, and then that's how you get all this, um, you know, people reaching out to you, um, you know, for opportunities. Really, a lot of people have, you know, shared their stories about getting opportunities through LinkedIn, and I can tell you for free that, you know, it's free visibility that you can leverage. So, like for the question I can ask, like for that person, I don't know if that person is actually creating any content and actually showing thought leadership, because if I did have a PhD, I do not even have a PhD right now, but I try to show thought leadership. So if you do have a PhD, you know, you know, want to make sure that you're showing that thought leadership, you know, let people see the value in you and actually reach out to you 
because um, they know you have you have something that's valuable. So um, yeah, that's my um, that's my final note. <laughs> and on that note, we'll say thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, good to see you, Zimita. Good to see you, Maureen. NEK, we we'll see you. Good to see you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the people that have been bold enough to, un right. <laughs> to unhide themselves. Chiwe, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Leko, thank you. Yes. Yes. Good to see you. I, I know Leko. Shala, good, good, good to see you. Thank you for making the time. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think what I'll just do right now is Akin, cool. Good to see your face too. I'll just have some music playing in the background and then, yeah, we can drop off as we please. Thank to, thanks to everyone for making the time and we appreciate it. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Keep believing in yourself and doing the work um, to definitely pay off. Borrow the belief. If, Borrow the belief. Borrow if the I belief. can do it, you know, you can do it. If, uh, you know, you hold on to somebody and you can look for somebody who has done what you've done and just believe that if they could do it, you also can do it. Follow, uh, follow their, the patterns, they, you know, they work their lifestyle and just do those things, you know, you'll get some results somehow. Yeah. Have a great weekend, everyone. Nice speaking with you. Thank you, Dotu. It's good night for me. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.